Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. You know, the House of Windsor has a treasure trove of priceless jewels, but it's not every day that the royals have the perfect occasion to flaunt them. So, it's no surprise that some of these gems make rare appearances. But let me tell you, the royal jewelry collection goes way beyond what we usually see on senior members of the royal family. In today's video, I'm excited to showcase a few of these hidden gems that I'm really hoping to see again. Before we start, please support my channel by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. The Passion Turquoise Tiara The Triumph of Love Tiara, also referred to as the Passion Turquoise Perot Tiara, holds an intriguing history. Originally acquired by Queen Mary, but she was never seen or photographed wearing it. Its moniker, the Triumph of Love, derives from the intricately crafted lover's knots, laurel wreaths, and the symbolic turquoise adorning its design. In 1923, King George V and Queen Mary bestowed this exquisite tiara upon Lady Elizabeth Boslyon, future Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, as a wedding gift for her union with Prince Albert, Duke of York, later King George VI. Initially styled in the Kokoschnik fashion, Elizabeth opted to modify it by removing the top row of diamonds. Although worn by the Duchess of York, it was never one of her favorites. Consequently, in 1951, she presented it to her second daughter, Princess Margaret, as a 21st birthday present. Following the Poltimore, the Persian tiara became the largest jewel in Margaret's collection, frequently adorning her ensemble at white tie affairs alongside coordinating pieces from the parole. Upon Margaret's passing in 2002, many of her jewels were auctioned to settle death duties, yet the tiara remained conspicuously absent from the sale. Speculation persists regarding its current ownership, some speculate it resides with one of Margaret's descendants, while others posit its return to the royal collection. Until the tiara graces public view once more, its fate remains a tantalizing mystery for royal enthusiasts to ponder. The Love Trophy Collar in 1901, the newly appointed Princess of Wales commissioned a magnificent love trophy collar, likely from either Gerard and Company. This stunning piece was crafted using stones sourced from various cherished family heirlooms, including a pair of diamond star earrings gifted to her by her mother, Princess Mary Adelaide of Cambridge, the Duchess of Teck, in 1884. Additionally, the collar incorporated a set of seven twelve-pointed stars from her grandmother, the Duchess of Cambridge, and a diamond spray brooch from her aunt, Princess Augusta, Grand Duchess of mecklenburg strelitz Described as being formed of seven brilliant lacet panels, each adorned with an array of romantic symbols such as bows, quivers, and torches encased within laurel wreath ovals, suspended elegantly from a ribbon tie, and framed by foliate brilliant set bands, the Love Trophy collar was truly a masterpiece of its time. However, necklaces of this style quickly fell out of favor after its creation. Sometime during the 1930s, Queen Mary passed the Love Trophy collar to her daughter-in-law, the then Duchess of York and future Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Though she never wore the collar in public, and neither was it worn by the late Queen Elizabeth II when she inherited the Queen Mother's jewels in 2002. Interestingly, the Love Trophy collar has not been disassembled and remains intact to this day. It was even photographed for Hugh Roberts' The Queen's Diamonds in 2012. Currently resting in the vaults, it eagerly awaits a moment to once again grace the world with its exquisite presence. The Dagmar Necklace The Dagmar Necklace holds a fascinating history. This necklace was commissioned by King Frederick VII of Denmark for the daughter of his future successor, Princess Alexandra, for her marriage to the then Prince of Wales in 1863. King Frederick furnished the replica of the Dagmar cross from the 11th or 12th century with a splinter of wood, supposedly a fragment of the true cross. With a piece of silk from the grave of King Canute, adding layers of historical significance. Upon its arrival in London, the renowned jeweller Gerard made alterations to the necklace. The two larger pendant pearls, the central pearl, the diamond cluster, and the Dagmar cross were made detachable, providing Princess Alexandra with versatility in wearing the necklace. Princess Alexandra showcased the full ensemble on notable occasions, notably portraying Mary, 
Queen of Scots, at the Waverley Ball in 1871 and during her coronation in 1902. Queen Alexandra later designated the necklace as a crown heirloom with the stipulation that it remain unaltered. Queen Elizabeth II has worn it with the cross and the two larger pearl pendants detached. The Tech Crescent Tiara The Tech Crescent Tiara became part of the British royal family through Queen Mary's mother, Princess Mary Adelaide, the Duchess of Tech. This diamond tiara features three wild roses separated by 20 crescent shapes, and Mary Adelaide pieced it together from various gems inherited from her aunt, Princess Mary, the Duchess of Gloucester. Now, Mary Adelaide's daughter-in-law, later Duchess of Tech, was also spotted wearing the tiara, but at some point, it landed in Queen Mary's hands, who then passed it on to Queen Elizabeth. It was never one of the Queen Mother's favorites, in fact, she made only one known public appearance in the piece, at a banquet in Canada in 1939. The tiara didn't surface again until it was included in the major exhibition of tiaras at the Victoria and Albert Museum in 2001. After the Queen Mother's death in 2002, the Tech Crescent tiara, like all her jewels, was inherited by the Queen, and it was stated a few years ago that the tiara is on loan to the now Queen Camilla, who has yet to wear the piece publicly. Queen Mary's Sapphire Bando Thought to have come from the collection of Empress Maria Fyodorovna of Russia, although this origin cannot be proven. This diamond sunburst bando with a large central sapphire was worn by Queen Mary in the 1930s and 40s. She also sometimes replaced the sapphire with her carved emerald brooch, a gift from the ladies of India at the 1911 Delhi Durbar. After her death in 1953, the tiara was inherited by the Queen. While the Queen never publicly wore Maria Fyodorovna's sapphire bando, she frequently loaned the tiara to her sister, Princess Margaret, in the 1950s and 60s, who also wore the central sapphire as a brooch. The bando hasn't been publicly worn in over 50 years. The Oriental Circlet When it comes to royal history, this tiara is top-notch. Not only did Queen Victoria wear it, but it was also designed by her beloved Albert. What's more, it's the only one out of four tiaras Albert designed that's still in the main branch of the British royal family's possession. Gerard brought Albert's vision to life in 1853, originally adorned with opals, a stone Prince Albert adored. Queen Victoria even commissioned an opal necklace, earrings, and brooch to complement the tiara after receiving the oriental circlet. Interestingly, neither Alexandra nor her successor, Queen Mary, were ever seen photographed wearing the tiara. It wasn't until Queen Elizabeth, known as the Queen Mum to us, donned it that it became a staple piece for her. Alongside the Boucheron tiara from the Greville inheritance, it was one of her go-to pieces in her later years. Although it is an heirloom of the crown, and therefore should have passed to the Queen Elizabeth II when she ascended to the throne in 1952. It stayed with the Queen Mother until her death in 2002. Queen Elizabeth II has only worn the tiara publicly once, during a state dinner in Malta in November 2005. It's been almost two decades since we last caught a glimpse of the Oriental Circlet, a treasured item of the Queen Mother's collection. The Indian Ruby, Lask, and Pearl Tiara. This one-of-a-kind diadem was a gift to Queen Victoria from Sayed Said, the ruler of Muscat, in 1838. London jewellers Kitching and Abud later redesigned it based on ideas from the Prince Consort. The tiara features rubies, diamonds, and pearls, crafted into 12 tear-shaped sections mounted on a gold and pearl band. Intricate enamel panels adorn the reverse sides, depicting figures in Kaja attire, Regency costume, and a rose and nightingale motif. First listed in Queen Victoria's Jewels Inventory in 1896, it was later noted by Crown Jeweler Gerard as being bequeathed by Queen Victoria to the Duchess of Albany, featuring a ruby, lask, and pearl tiara with an enamel portrait at the back. Lask refers to an unfaceted diamond. Though it temporarily left the royal collection, it found its way back and was added by King George V to the Crown's Indian collection in 1924. Today, it stands as a magnificent testament to the artistry of jewellery design. Which of these pieces would you also like to see worn by royalty again?
Or maybe you have your own option. Write about it. Thank you for watching this video. Share your impressions in the comments and support my channel by subscribing and liking. Thank you.